Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video to uh, demonstrate how to use Kirchhoff's Law to solve uh, a circuit problem that requires a system of equations to solve. So what we're looking at here is a circuit. We got a 12 volt battery source, a six volt source, a three ohm resistor, a five ohm resistor, and a two ohm resistor. And before we proceed, it's important that we recognize how many currents we have. We're going to have a current in every independent branch here. So we're going to have a current in that branch. I'm going to go ahead and call that current I1. We're going to have a current in this branch. I'll call that one I2. And we're going to have a third current that's going to be good in that branch, which I'm going to call I3. So I'm going to go ahead now and put those currents in. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, use red here for my current direction. So based on this battery, we're going to have a current in this direction. I'm going to call that current I1. The direction is coming from the uh, polarity of the battery, plus minus, remembering that uh, we are going to draw currents assuming positive charge carriers. That current will be good everywhere in this branch uh, to this point. At In this branch, we're going to have a current, which I believe will be down. I'm going to go ahead and call that current I2. And then in this branch, we're going to have a current that's going to be uh, counterclockwise in a sense. So I'm going to go ahead and call that current I3. Now, an important thing to realize, if you don't know a current direction, that's fine. You're completely free to guess a current direction. As long as you're consistent, you write a good uh, set of equations, uh, and you're cons consistent throughout the problem, it'll all work itself out in the end. What will happen is if you have a current in, in an incorrect direction, you'll just get a minus sign for an answer. All right, so now I'm going to write a series of equations. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to write an equation for that loop right there. So if I do that, again, starting here, we're going to have 12 volts, volts, and that's going to be an increase in potential because of the way I went across it. Then we're going to have minus IR because the current's going left to right minus IR. The, since the R is 2, I think that 2I1 sounds a lot better than I1 times 2, so this is just written backwards, but IR. Put a little NCU for note consistent units. As we come down through here, we're going to drop in potential by an amount 3I2, so minus 3I2. We're back to where we started, so equals 0. There's uh, equation 1. I'm going to go ahead now and do Oh, I think I'll do this little loop right here. This loop right there. So, starting here, as we walk uh, counter or clockwise, the first potential difference we hit is I2 times 3 ohms, but that's going to be an increase in potential because we're moving up into the current, so we're going to have plus uh, 3I2 for that term. As we go across this resistor, we are going to change in potential by an amount I3R. That's going to be an increase in potential again, so I'm going to put plus 5I3 for that term. As we come across the battery, we're going to go down by 6 volts and then equals zero. Now, if you look at the branches, or if you, if you look at the loops that I've done, we did this. Then we did this. You'll notice that the entire thing is covered now. At this point, it's a good idea to use a different type of equation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this junction right here, taking note that what's coming into that junction is I2, and what's going out is I1 and uh, the current I3. So that's going to allow me to write a third equation, which is going to be I2 is equal to I1 plus I3. Okay, so what I have now is a system of equations, three equations, three unknowns. And what we have to do now is solve for I1, I2, and I3. I like to use just good old-fashioned substitution when I do this. Uh, let's see. Noticing that my equation one, let me give these names, one, two, and three. Notice that equation, let's see, one has only I1 and I2. Notice that equation 2 has I2 and I3. If I solved this one for I3, sub it here, I'm going to get an equation with only I2 and I1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve equation 3 for I3. Do that over here. So I3 is equal to I2 minus I1. Whoops. Not R1, I1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub that into equation 2. So what we're going to have is 3 times I2 
plus 5 times i3, which I can write as i2 minus i1. Um, now this minus 6 volts, I'm going to go ahead and put that on the other side, equals 6. Right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite uh, this equation. And I'm going to rewrite that equation 2i1 plus 3i2 equals 12. And what I'm going to do now is treat this like my new system of equations here that only has i2 and i1 in it. So again, let me go through those steps. What did I do? I solved this for i3, subbed it there, There's, and I rewrote the equation. Then I took equation 1 and I wrote it here, changing only the order. Notice if I add the i2 and i3 to the other term, to the other side, and then I just flip the direction around. So i2 plus i3 equals 12. So what I'm going to do now is treat from here down like a new system of equations, a 2 by 2. All right, so I'm going to call this equation 1 and this equation 2. All right, now I'm going to rewrite equation 1. Let's see. We're going to have a minus 5i1 from this product. All right, i2 terms. We have 3i2 and plus 5i2. That's going to be plus 8i2 equals 6. All right, this equation, I think I'm just going to rewrite it just the way it is. 2i1 plus 3i2 equals 12, right? This now from here down, this is going to be my new system of equations. Now there's a couple ways I can solve this. Uh, one method would be maybe I could solve this for I1 and sub it into there. Uh, another thing I can do is if I multiplied this equation by positive 2 and this equation by negative 5 and added these terms up, they're going to add to 0. Let's see, and I'm going to have to make a choice here on what to do. Um, I think what I'll do to do this in a very mainstream way, I'm going to take this equation and solve it for i1. If we do, we would have to subtract the 3i2 and divide by 2. So what we're going to have is 6 minus 1.5i2. If we solve this equation for i1, subtract the 3i2, divide everything by 2. That would become a 6, and this, this would become a minus 1.5i2. Now I think what I'll do is I'll take this and sub it into this equation to get my new one. I'm going to start up here. So we're going to have minus 5 times i1, which is equal to 6 minus 1.5i2, plus 8i2 equals 6. Right Now I have an equation that only has i2s in it. Let's see, so this product is minus 30 plus this product is 7.5i2. And again, that's positive because um, a negative times a negative. Plus 8i2 equals 6. Okay. These can now be added together. Those add to 15.5i2 equals... And then we have the 6, and I'm going to go ahead and add the 30 to the other side. That's going to give us 36. So I2 is going to equal 36 over 15.5. 2.32 amps. All right. I can go back to any of my previous work, so I'm going to look right here to get I1. I1 is going to equal 6 minus 1.5 times 2.32 amps. And I get 2.52 amps for I1. And let's see, I3 is the difference between them. I3 is going to be I2 minus I1. And that's going to be 2.32, let's see. 2.32 amps minus 2.52 amps and I get what negative 0.2 out of that for I3. Okay so it's looking like I3 is in the other direction. 
I'm going to take a moment here and just pause this and think about that and decide if that makes sense or not. All right, folks, so I'm back, and what I did is I took these three values here because, you know, I was a little suspicious because of this negative current on I3. My gut instinct looking at my picture told me I3 would be in the direction shown, but I went through and I checked our three answers against the system of equations. I took I2, let's plug that there, I1, plug that there, got zero out of it. Took I3, I2 and I3 using negative 0.2 amps here, um, got 0.04, something very, very small, close to zero to within what I thought was rounding error. And then I checked I2 equals I1 plus I3. So it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and just check the loop equations, make sure they're okay. 12 minus 2I1 minus 3I2 equals zero. Yep, that one's good. 3I2 plus 5I3 minus 6 equals zero. That one looks good. And then coming into this junction is I2, going out is I1 and I3. So I2 equals I1 plus I3. Okay, I've checked it for mistakes. Seems to be pretty good. Uh, hope this video helped demonstrate how to write a system of equations and solve it. There's lots of methods for solving these. Uh, I just use kind of stuck with substitution the entire time. But again, you can use going back here where I had thought about uh, when I'm dealing with this 2 by 2 multiplying this equation by 2, multiplying this equation by 5 would have gave me a negative 10i1 here, a positive 10i1 here. We could have added those equations together and solved for i2. That would have worked just fine. You know, my advice is take your system of equations. If it's a 3i, three, 3 by 3, try to do one or two substitutions to reduce it to a 2 by 2. And then take your 2 by 2, solve for one, sub into the other, try to get it down to one unknown. If you've got a 4 by 4, four equations, four unknowns, just try to do a series of substitutions to turn it into a 3 by 3, and then turn that into a 2 by 2, and so forth. Anyway, hope this video helps. Have a great day.